is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Fans, uh, let's uh, do a little Dolphins talk. Uh, today, uh, Brian Flores addressed the media. Let's uh, listen to his comments, and obviously we will uh, react to his comments. We'll do that uh, as it goes on. Go ahead. Fire off flow this morning. Uh, good morning, Coach. I was wondering your, your uh, thinking on staying with Ryan Fitzpatrick as your starter in Week 5. I always feel like he is just the best chance to win. Um, and, you know, after uh, – I think he's, you know – had some some rough moments like like some other players, but we we felt like he gives his best chance to win. All right, Adam again. I wanted to get some clarity on on one thing about Tua. Um, you've, you've said time and again that he's checked all the boxes, uh, and you, you obviously feel like the street. You froze there, Adam. Anybody, anybody else? Am I the only one who's enough to, uh, to put him into a game? Adam, you froze. So can you just uh, can you can you say that again? I didn't hear. Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. I I just wanted to get your thinking on on the difference between Tua as a backup with his health and Tua as a starter, because you mentioned you know you don't you obviously don't want to rush him back, don't want to feel pressured to. Where, where he has to play, uh, where he must play. Um, in your mind, uh, what's what's the threshold for him? That it's okay for him to be a backup, but but maybe not quite be a starter yet. I guess I'm struggling with the question. Can you? What's the threshold? Well, he's a he's yeah, a backup. Sure. So look, he's, look, he could go in on, on any very on any snap. So obviously, we're confident he can play. Uh, just like any backup player, um, we're confident in any player who's, you know, has a backup role to play in the game. Um, you know, so I guess if, you know, we're, we're confident, you know, from a standpoint that you know, on any snap he could go in there. So, um, you know, as, as far as, you know, him being a starter, we just don't feel like he's ready there just yet. So um, that's kind of, you know, where we're at with, you know, him and, you know, other players or some other rookies who, who who just aren't ready to kind of take that step just yet. So, um, but he's doing all, all the right things. Um, right now, we feel like Fitz gives us the best chance to win. Um, I would say overall, Fitz has played, you know, pretty well. You know, he's had some rough patches, like like, like I said earlier, um, like some other players. But, you know, we do feel like he gives us the best chance to win. Stop it. Hey, Coach, just a logistics question. Um, are you guys going to fly out Friday night, Friday or Saturday? And um, I did want to ask about the San Fran QB situation. Um, not sure if Garoppolo is going to return to practice, but Nick Mullins and CJ Bethard are probably two other guys you're going to have to uh, prepare for. Um, you know, what's it going to be like preparing for maybe three quarterbacks instead of one or, or two? Um, well, yeah, we're going to fly out Friday. Um, as far as the quarterbacks, um, you know, all three of them are good players. Um, so, look, we, we, there's film on all of them. Uh, we're uh, pretty much going to have to watch them all. Uh, I think we've done that um, as a staff already, and we're going through that with the players already this morning. Um, all three good players, but it's I, won't, I wouldn't say it's just the quarterback. It's really – it's every it's everyone on offense. Obviously, the, the, the O-line, the tight ends, uh, they got good backs, they got good receivers. So, uh, and they got a good scheme. So, um the quarterback's just one one part of that, and um, but we're really preparing for the the entire the entire group. Uh, it's a good group. Joe, good morning, Flo. Um, good job. Two part two part question, but they're completely related. They're, they're not separate. The okay. first one is how long was the discussion regarding a potential change of quarterback on Monday night, and then in a related question. How long is Fitz's rope at this point in the season? Uh, well, look, any discussions we have as a staff, they're, they're just going to remain internal. Um, as far as, uh, I mean, I don't even want to use the term, but uh, look, we expect Fitz to play well. We expect expect everyone 
uh, offensively, defensively, in the kicking game to play well. Um, you know, we're not you know putting negative energy into the into into the atmosphere. So um, we just got to prepare well this week, practice well this week, you know, fly out to California, and uh, uh, try to win a, a, a football game against a good group, a very good group actually. All right, so this is really good on Joe Shad's part. Because he asked, how long was the discussion about the quarterback and how long is his rope? And so the coach wasn't going to ever answer the rope on any player ever. He's not going to come out and say, well, let me tell you something, guys. If that quarterback allows two completed passes, his ass is going to the bench. If that quarterback throws an interception, his ass is going to the bench. If that linebacker misses two tackles, he's going to the bench. Not going to happen. Okay, but I love that Joe asked because you just never know what the hell. But by him saying that whatever discussions we have are going to be internal, he never denied and never said to Joe, well, who said we had quarterback discussions about a change or anything. So that means that the discussion has already happened. Okay. And I, I figured that, that Fitz was going to start anyways. I, I, I was pretty much 1,000% sure they weren't going to make a quarterback change because I don't think they're ready to make a quarterback change because it's not Fitz's fault. Now, if this continues where it's not necessarily Fitz's fault, but you're not producing points, then you're going to make a change. And I think the next two weeks – because these are back-to-back trips to the West Coast, I don't think they're going to put two in that position. But if you look at the schedule after that, I could actually see Miami if it continues. Now, I'm talking about you losing these two games, which then puts you at a, at a obviously at a huge disadvantage if you lose these games. Now, all of a sudden, you put yourself in a position that – You start to think about, okay, well, we need to kickstart the offense. We need to get it going. Now, remember, they scored uh, 28 points against Buffalo. Then they they scored 31 points against Jacksonville. Uh, And and Buffalo's got a pretty good defense. So you are talking about pretty good production the last two weeks prior to the 23-point performance and all the field goals against Seattle. Now you play San Francisco, a depleted San Francisco. You play an okay Denver team because they got a they got a decent defense, but their offense isn't anything. So now you've got two winnable games. How do you run the offense now during those two games? Do you take advantage of your red zone opportunities, and do you win? I think he'll be judged over the next two weeks that if you drop to one in five. I think there could be a change for that Chargers game or the Rams game. But if you start winning those games, it puts him on ice. Okay? And when you get into um, the Los Angeles games, we're now at the back end of October and starting in November. So now we're creeping up to the one year because it's in a little bit in the middle or later November when he had the surgery. So I think it starts to get into that area. And if you had a conversation, then that means you're concerned about the production on offense, you're concerned about losing, and you want to win. You're not there to tank. You were never there to tank last year. You're not tanking now. But good job by Joe just to kind of, you know, at least bring up the scenario, and it was never downplayed by the coach. Go ahead, Bill. Barry? Hi, Brian. I know one thing you suggested Monday was maybe at the quarter mark of the season. Now you take a look at playing time allocation. Did you emerge from that conversation with your assistants uh, thinking that there would be some changes at some positions? And also want to ask you about now that the NFL has made basically a six day turnaround to get a player in the building for a tryout and sign him. Does that make you and Chris less likely to bring in outside guys for looks? Uh, so the less likely yet, I mean, it's hard to bring someone in, um, uh, yeah, with the, uh, six days, Barry, you throw like four or five at me. 
right at once. So let me let me try to I'm trying to backtrack here. Uh, so yeah, it's harder to get somebody in, obviously. Um, so there's we've already kind of gone through the thought and planning if we're going to do something at really for next week. And I think every team's kind of going through that same process. Um, as far as you know, the meetings with the coaches uh, from a playing time standpoint, and look, we're, we're, like every team, we want to play our, our our best players, our most dependable players. Um, we talked about you know situations where we want to play guy different guys, and you know maybe we want to you know, play some guys more, play some guys less, um, and we're going to try to you know probably practice that way uh, this today and this week, and then you know see how how. Uh, how things shake you know, throughout the course of the week. Um, but we always want to get our best guys out there, our best group of guys, our most dependable players. I think that's everything, Barry. Go to Hal. Hi, Brian. I have only one question for you. <laughs> uh, it's regarding Preston Williams. Obviously, he looked so good last year, was on pace to set uh, team records for rookie receivers. What is how does that compare to how he looks this year? I think he's at roughly 20 yards per game in receiving. How close is he to the Preston Williams we saw last year? Well, I think you know, coming off an injury, it's you, you know, you, you never know how, how things are going to shake out. I think he's doing well from a physical standpoint. Uh, look, Preston's a hard working kid, um, he's obviously talented. Um, you know, look, we, 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 I, I think he's. He's, uh, I think he's, you know, there physically. We just got to, you know, find different ways to get him the ball. And, uh, you know, he's got to, he's got to, he's got to, uh, he's got to come through for us when we, we do throw him the ball. So, um, again, you know, we're four weeks into the season. And that's something that was discussed, uh, a part of the discussion with the, with the coaching staff, uh, how to get um, him more involved. And you know, hopefully we, get, we do that in the, in the coming weeks. Omar? I want to get a clarification on Austin Jackson's uh, status and, and his practice participation. Also, if you can assess how Julian Davenport played in his role last week and, and if your stance is to still start the best five guys, figuring out the combination, however you however it works. Yeah, well, I thought Julian played well last week when he, when he went, in there, uh, went in there for Austin. Um, you know, I, th I thought he played well. I thought he, he did a really good job. Um, Austin, you know, as far as practice, you know, you won't see, he won't be out there today. Um, you know, hopefully he's still kind of working through some things, but hopefully, you know, tomorrow or, or hopefully tomorrow we'll see. Um, so just from that standpoint, you won't see him today, but Julian played well. Um, yes, we'll always try to play the, the five best guys. Um, so, you know, obviously Julian will be part of that. Rob Hunt will be part of that conversation. So, um, again, we'll see how this goes throughout the practice week and uh, we'll take it from there. Cam? Hey, good morning, Flo. Um, you mentioned earlier about, about Tua and not being ready yet to be the starter. I wanted to ask, how do you think he can get there with, with mental reps? Is that something he can do there or do you have to see him on the field before you know he's truly ready? I think he's got to keep doing what he's doing. I think he's, I mean, he's in here every day. He's working. He's practicing well. Um, and, you know, I think that's he just continues to do what he's been doing. Um, he's learning every day. Uh, he's getting better and improving every day. Um, and if he just continues to do what he's doing, he'll, he'll, he's, he's on the right on the right path, on the right trajectory. Um, so, again, like we're not going to get an opportunity. We didn't have any preseason games. We, like that's not going to happen. You know, as far as uh, getting a different way, a different look at this. Um, so for him, the only thing he can do is come in, do a good job in meetings, do a good job in the walkthroughs, do a good job in practice. And then, um, you know, when his opportunity presents itself, which, you know, you know, as the backup could be at any point, uh, you know, in the game, you know, I think the 49ers are a great example of that having played three guys already. Um, then he's just got to be ready. So, um, that's really, that's really it. Joe? I wanted to ask you about uh, Matt Breida. He made a couple of plays in the passing game uh, last week. I was wondering what stood out to you about Breida and how you think he's coming along? 
Yeah, I think he uh, made some good good plays the other other day. Um, but he's an explosive kid, fast. Um, he's practiced well. You know, getting a few more touches. Um, yeah, so I think he's playing well, and I hope hopefully he continues to play well. Um, he's a hardworking guy, and you know it's important to him. So um, I think he's doing he's doing a good job. Soften. I um, just wanted to get back to Tua and uh, and ask, uh, you know, could could him getting any kind of limited snaps during a game, uh, you know, kind of help towards his progression to becoming a, a, a the starter? Uh, potentially, that could that could help. Um, but there's a lot of other things to that. Um, how the game's going rhythm of the offense. I mean, there's there's so many uh, um, things pertaining to the team that you don't want to do something for one specific person. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd, uh, you know, I guess I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not, I wouldn't be uh, in favor of something like that. Um, but I understand the question. All right, we got time for one more. We'll go to Omar. I love that I get the last question always. Um, qu clarify something for me. Would you be comfortable playing Jesse Davis at left tackle to get Robert Hunt snaps at right tackle, or can Robert play left tackle? Uh, Robert can play left tackle. I would be comfortable playing Jesse at left tackle. I'm also comfortable playing Julian at left tackle. Uh, so look, let's see, just see how the week goes. Um, you know, thankfully we've got a couple of some guys that we, we, we feel good about, um, going in and, you know, playing left, right. I think, uh, all guys, all those guys have, have played both positions. So, um, yeah, I mean, but at the same time, look, we're going up against a, a very, uh, aggressive defensive line, um, and a very, very, very good defense. So. Um, this will be a tough, tough challenge, and um, but you know we'll, we'll see how this goes over the over the course of the week. Um, I'm not saying Austin's out of the out of the uh, out of the question either. Um, so let's just you know take it one day at a time. But yeah, I'm comfortable with all those guys playing. You know, really left or right, they're all they're all. Uh, you know, I think Steve will do a good job of getting them ready, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna need to play well from. From an O line and really a team standpoint against this team, they're 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 very good. There is the head coach of your Miami Dolphins, Brian Flores, and obviously the Tua thing is in there.